I want to start off by saying I believe that my session is going to completely contradict what you just talked about. So, and I'm not trying to be confrontational, I'm just trying to be Suzanne. That's all I can be. So, that's that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is I want to give a great, huge thank you uh, to the organizers, to the board. Uh, this is the most inclusive conference I go to for small talk. And I go to a lot of events around the world uh, for small talk and for other developer conferences. I love this event. It's so fantastic. It's so positive. It's so inclusive. As a commercial vendor, I feel welcome. Uh, I can't really speak for open source, but the fact that you welcome VA Small Talk, Syncom Small Talk, I'm going to get in trouble for saying VA Small Talk first, uh, B Small Talk, Faro, Squeak, all of them. Can we edit that? Uh, but uh, I, I love how inclusive it, it is and, and how comfortable. And Gem Talk, and Gem Talk, thank you. Thank you, James. We're going to edit that. I meant to say Gem Talk first, but VA came out first, so there you go. Uh, pretty much what I want to talk about, I mean, I look around this room and I see people that I've known for decades and uh, people who I've known for a couple decades. And then uh, I know some fresh faces, some new faces. Uh, I'm not going to say old faces because there are no old faces in small talk. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is, is you know, we all seem to have a passion for small talk. And there's a quote by a, a gentleman by the name of, I think it's Carl Holmes, and he says, make your, pa your, your passion your profession. And I think all of us are doing that. So that actually ties into what you were saying, make your passion your profession. And that's what I want to talk about. We've, uh, there are students here, there are people who have never touched small talk, but they're interested in it, and you're thinking, I'm going to dip my you know, toe in the water and find out what this small talk thing is all about. Some people have taken courses and you love it. Some are consultants, some are working in a commercial environment. You're all over the place, and that's great, because we need all over the place. Um, I'm going to talk about the what now, meaning what do I do after I get out of school, or what do I do if I get bored with what I'm working on? What do I do next? Or how do I take all of the things I love doing and, and bring it all together with small talk? So I want to talk about some programs that we have available uh, with Syncom. I can speak about Syncom, but I also spend a lot of time with GemTalk, and I spend a lot of time with the instantiations folks. We have a lot of the same types of programs. And the end result for all of those programs is growing the community, building awareness for small talk, and making sure that we keep getting these rooms more and more full, with more and more passion. Um, that's what our, end, and our goal is. So that's what I'm talking about here. If you think, oh gosh, it's a marketing talk, there's a chance I'm going to talk about some marketing stuff. Marketing is not too bad. It really isn't. Because if we don't share what we're doing, nobody knows we're doing it. Uh, I'm going to talk about sales, which is kind of weird, because um, if you look at my list of titles, none of it says sales. When I was talking to my boss the other day and he was telling me where he thought I spent most of my time, I looked at him and I said, no, I actually spend about 70% of my time selling. And believe it or not, everyone in this room does the same thing. Maybe not 70%, but we all have to sell. We have to sell what we're doing, we have to sell what we're working on, we have to sell what we want to do. Um, this is not going to be a sales talk because even though I spend most of my time selling, it, I don't want to talk about sales. So, the reason I have this slide up here, when we were putting my title on, we thought, oh, what do we want to say? You know, what, what's my title? And I have a friend who, every morning he wakes up, he opens up his closet and says, who am I today? Whichever shirt talks to him, ah, I'm going to be a bright fuchsia shirt today. That's who I am today. For me, I open up my email and find out who am I, who am I going to be today? Who am I going to be right now? What are my priorities? Is it a customer? Is it a partner? Is it Gabby calling to talk to me about this conference? Who am I today? And at any given time, I'm doing something different. People talk about wearing different hats. And as many people as I know in the small talk community, we all wear a lot of different hats. And, and so I'm not unique in that way. My group, though, we actually don't say I wear hats. I wear a sombrero and I have labels of different roles that I have, and we kind of spin the sombrero, and who am I right now? So I just want you to consider that when you're thinking about where do I want to take my small talk career. You might want to teach small talk. You might want to work for a vendor. Um, when people hear commercial small talk, they think, ooh, really? 
um, it's really not that bad. Um, but also, you know, you've got Ten Pines, you've got Mercap, you've got J.P. Morgan. Those are all commercial small talk. You know, when you, you don't want to be a student for the rest of your life. I mean, some people might, but you don't want to. And I'm sorry, I just saw Leandra, so I have to say Caesar. We have to have Caesar Systems and, and the incredible B Small Talk. I didn't mention that one either. I apologize because I love B Small Talk. I really do. Uh, I actually spoke about it recently, and the person on the phone said, "Wow." I, I'm working with B Small Talk, and you just told me more about it than I know. So I do. I, I like it a lot. Uh, but with commercial small talk, it's not a scary thing. Commercial small talk should be something that you're thinking of, your next step. But what do you want to do with commercial small talk? So that's what I'm going to talk about: the different programs that we have available, and again, the end result of all of these programs: growing the small talk community. And it's not just about SynCom small talk; it's about all small talk because. At the end of the day, even though that says all things small talk for Syncom, I think if you've ever been with me anywhere, I won't trash any other small talk because I believe in small talk. I think there's a great future. When I look around these, this room, and I know I've known people for 10 minutes, and I know other people for 30 years, um, there's a future, there's potential, there's really cool things going on. So I, I want to share our programs with you, and I hope that you'll take advantage of them, ask questions about them, and uh, see what we can do with this small talk thing. So if you've ever had any conversation, I name everything. So my team, my marketing guys, they, uh, I kind of drive them crazy, but it's, it's, it's considered the source. Uh, this is Jacob. So Jacob is this guy who, in one corner, he's a student, he might be a consultant, he might be a business owner, he might be just about anything. He might be a developer relations guy. That's a new, really cool job. It's a kind of a blend of developer and evangelist, and it's a cool job. I, I would love to have that job. Uh, but I bring up Jacob because it, it helps you, it helps guide you through where you might be with, with any of the programs that we have available. So the first Jacob, I know that there are several of this guy in this room. Because I actually receive every single, I, I get a copy of every request that comes in for Syncom Small Talk. Might seem like, wow, that's going to take up a lot of your time. I just glance at them and I see who is it, or they, you know, is it, who's this person and who am I going to have to send an email to tomorrow? But he's a student and he wants to learn Small Talk. He might be at a university, he might be in high school, he might be anywhere. But we want to make sure that we have the tools available for him to learn small talk or to learn a new skill, a new talent. And we consider learning small talk a new skill or a new talent if you haven't touched it. Um, or maybe you want to see what we've been up to. So you download it. I think most of you know where this place is. This right here is just a list of some of the universities, some of the colleges around the world teaching small talk. I don't have them all up there, I promise, so if you're looking for one that you've been associated with and it's not there, uh, you can yell at me about it, or you can send me an email and say, I want to make sure you're aware of this, I'm okay with it. One of the other things I want to talk about, there were, uh, Brian mentioned uh, Ralph Johnson. Ralph Johnson was actually a speaker at the conference last year. And I was talking to him and I said, you know, how do we get, you're, you're, you've worked for a university forever, you've got small talk there, how do we get small talk into more universities around the world? And he said, you know, that's a tough call. Since there's so many things going on, I recommend you do, you host a couple, over the summer break, you host some high school teachers. Show them what you have available. Show them what's available with small talk. Get them excited about it so that when they get back to school, it's an opportunity or something that they can tell their kids about. Computer science is cool. Uh, you have to consider that, I know this might come as a surprise to some people in the room, back in the day, some people didn't touch a computer until they were in their 20s, maybe their 30s even. And today, kids, before they're even going to preschool, they're using little devices and they've got their tablet and they're doing all this kind of stuff. So there has been a decline in computer sciences. But it's not because people aren't interested in it. It's because they're writing their first program before they're in first grade. And they're thinking, I need to hone other skills when I get to university. So I found Ralph's talk really, that the conversation we had really interesting to go after other areas, go after sounds bad, 
uh, but to go into other areas, go to inner city schools, go to trade schools. Not every single person is going to have the opportunity to go to university. Um, not every person has the opportunity to stay in school. Something might come up, but having the skill of a programmer and being able to use a tool is something that is a skill. It's something that they can build a career around. And, and so I'm not, I'm not saying drop out of school. Everyone stay in school. Everybody stay in school. Uh, but I just want you to know that this is another reason for the program. It's not, I'm not just talking about this for the people in this room, but I'm giving, I want to give you some ideas of some of the other programs that we're working on. And uh, that's what it is. This next one, uh, this is a program that we've had for a really long time, but actually last year at this conference, I had the opportunity to meet with a couple people who did a really cool application, the Lazaro Project, and I was sitting in a session and I heard them talking about it. It was an application that they wrote to help one of their fellow students um, who was visually impaired become a programmer. And I perked up and I thought, wait a minute here, I have customers who could use this application. This is the coolest thing in the world, to be able to hear something from a student at a conference and introduce them to one of our, to one of our customers or a few of our customers or promote this outside of their university. So we spent a couple months kind of walking through their application and we wrote up a story and we promoted it. And yes, it was not written in Syncom Smalltalk, but it was written in Smalltalk. And we wanted to make sure that Smalltalk, we could promote this. We could promote this in different areas to get other people understanding Smalltalk is a viable solution. Uh, so we promoted this and they're doing fantastic with their program, radio interviews, all kinds of cool stuff. But this, thank you. Uh, but this is, a, this is one of the programs that we have available because so many students are doing really cool applications. But we also spoke with some professors when we were putting this program together because they wanted the students to start writing different types of projects, different types. Where would you solve this problem? What's, what problem are you solving here? Or is it just a cool application? Sometimes just a cool application is good, but other times, where do you want to take this? How do you want to expand on that? How do you want to build on that? And that's why we wrote this program to not only help promote students' uh, applications, but again, to gain visibility for small talk in different industries so that people will think about where could I use small talk. And for any of you who have ever been involved with small talk, one of the most frustrating things when you have a marketing director, no offense against our marketing director, who comes to you and says, who's your target audience? You know, oh, Susie Small Talk, who is your target audience? And I have to say, you know what? I don't really have one. Because as far as I'm concerned, anyone with any problem can solve it with small talk. Now, my engineers right now would say, oh, there she goes again. It fixes everything. But, but really, if you have a problem, if you need a solution, I believe you can write it in small talk. And I saw a lot of heads nodding before I said that. So I think you all agree with me. But we want to make sure that we're, pro we're promoting these solutions. And it'd be great if it came from students. Because why not promote what you're doing? Why not you know, give you some... some conversations about what solutions or what problems you might be solving. Here's Jacob again. A couple years later, he's out of school or he's deciding another thing that he wants to do. He might be a citizen developer, he might be a consultant, he might be a trainer, he might be just about anything. And actually that phrase citizen developer means different things for different people. Uh, there were a couple years ago when the management at CENCOM asked me to write a business plan. And I thought, are you kidding me? We're the most profitable product group in this company. And you want me to write a business plan? We're successful. We're rocking it. We're doing really well. And I have to say that that project was one of the best projects I've ever worked on. We learned so much about small talk, about what we're doing, about our capabilities, about how we could do more. But one of the things we learned about was this thing called a citizen developer. It's a phrase that Gartner started, one of the analyst firms. And when we were reading the description of a citizen developer, we said, that sounds a lot like our personal use license users. This is really cool. We also learned another phrase called business analyst. When we were reading the business analyst thing, we thought, that sounds a lot like our object studio users. To a T. These guys are you know, working in business, coding on their own, but they're using the application during the day. It's a different breed. It really is. Uh, but it's still really interesting. So we started using in our campaigns phrases like citizen developer, business analyst, and lo and behold, 
we started having more and more people come along downloading our personal use license and saying, I'm a citizen developer. I was really interested when I found out you were marketing to me. I think that's pretty cool. But that was all from the business plan. I highly recommend that even as an individual, you try writing a business plan about who you are and where you want to be. It's, it's something that is a living document. You can change it at any time. There are applications. Of course, there's an app for that. Uh, but there are applications you can fill out. Some of the information you'll know right off. It's like, yeah, of course I know myself. But there will be some areas you have no clue as to how to answer those questions. And you're going to have to dig deep inside to figure out, how would I answer that question? And you'll learn more about yourself. But whether you're writing as an individual or if you're writing it as a business, this will help you with your elevator pitch. Elevator pitch is when you're going to a venture capitalist, when you're going to your next boss, when you're looking for your next raise. If you're writing a business plan for yourself, you know who you are, you know what you have to offer, you know what they're going to gain from giving you that raise or for giving you that consulting job. But I highly recommend trying to write a business plan for yourself and then evaluating it every now and then. What are some of my goals? Have I achieved those goals? And you know, I can honestly say that one of the things that I work on with, with some of the people I work with, at the beginning of each release cycle, actually, at the end of each release cycle, they're just a melted little puddle. You know, it's like, ugh, that was exhausting. But at the beginning of each release cycle, I like to ask them, what are the three things you're really excited for in this re release cycle? What are you looking forward to accomplishing in this next release cycle? Because I know that by the end of the release cycle, they're going to be a melted little puddle. But then I can talk to them and say, here are the three things we talked about at the beginning of the release cycle. You got all of that done. You cranked it out plus a lot more. And it helps them to feel more accomplished. It helps them to feel like, you know what, I did do a lot. That wasn't as frustrating. I did accomplish a lot. And that's kind of a mini business plan. That's helping them to realize I, I did some pretty cool stuff during this release cycle, and I started some new projects, and I did some research, I learned some new things, and that's, that's pretty cool. But that's the type of thing that we do with the citizen developers. Our personal use license, um, we have the academic personal use license, which goes to the Jacob the student, but we also have our personal use license, which is a free version of our product that anyone can download at any time. There's a chance that there's another slide about this, but I'm going to talk about it now. We, uh, about a year ago, we created a new program called the REV program, R-E-V, REV, like rev up your engine, rev up your application, rev up your future. We created that program, um, and it's an it's a easy introduction, it's a $500 license, it's uh, in the business world, we say put some skin in the game. It's ha having people sign up, putting some skin in the game. And I can tell you that it's been really interesting. We had a goal when we first said this, how many people do we want to get in this REV program in the first year? In the first year, we far exceeded our goal. And the, the goal that we didn't set for ourselves, we had 40% of the people who signed up for the REV program poured over to our regular value-added resale program. They became fully licensed users of our product because they said, putting some skin in the game made me commit to the business. It's an application I wrote eight years ago, and I've just been dabbling in it. But this really made me think, I can't just waste that money. I can't throw that away. I really need to do something here. So we worked with them on their business plans, on putting together some promotions for what they were doing, going after some strategic lists that would be interested in their solutions. And so the REV program has really taken off. So it, it, it seemed like a, a random, weird thing to do, but it, it's worked out, more revenue. And like I said, I was, I was shocked when I looked at the numbers and saw almost 40% had already migrated to become full VARs. Uh, this is the part about why is it good to partner with a commercial vendor. Uh, some people, I heard earlier someone saying there's not a lot of small talk out there or not a lot of people are using small talk. In my day job, these are my customers. And we have over 500 customers. If they're my customers, they're using small talk. So there you go. When I go to meet with these customers, quite often they say, we're looking for some interns. We're looking for some consultants. We're looking for some full-time people. And so that's why when I come to these organizations and I say, please email me anytime. Please let me know who you are. Please introduce yourself. Because on a regular basis, I am looking for either people to work for Syncom in our engineering group 
or I'm looking for someone to work for one of our customers, I'm looking for interns, at any given time, I'm looking for resources for our customer base. And John O'Keefe knows this, it's not always just for Syncom small talk. I do get requests for visual age and VA small talk as well. Um, I don't get any for gem talk, sorry James. Uh, but uh, just in case he was gonna yell at me again. Uh, but, but on a regular basis, we're looking for resources. And so when you finish your education, there you go Gabby, I got finish your education in. And uh, so if, when you finish your education and you're looking for work, if you're looking for intern, please remember to get in touch with me because I want to connect you with our customers or with anyone within the small talk community looking for resources. Um, so that's something that we, we have available for you. So in the end, for any campaigns that we do, I always ask who is our audience? Who is this campaign? Why are we promoting this? And that's what Jacob, Jacob has very, lots of different roles. Are we going after the student community? Are we going after consultants? Are we going after citizen developers? Are we going after our own customers? What's this messaging for? Who is our audience? Which Jacob is it? And a lot of times it can be any of the Jacobs. So we don't, we don't care which Jacob it is. It's one of the Jacobs. But with my team, you have to tell me which Jacob it is and, and then I'll know. I better understand how I'm supposed to read a message you're trying to give me. This here, these are some of the programs I've talked about or haven't talked about. Um, we have a monthly newsletter, Digest. We love to get articles and stories in, so it's a, it's a general small talk. We try and promote all events that are going on regarding small talk or technology. We actually did promote the programming conference last year uh, because we knew Gilad was speaking at that event and we wanted to get him a good audience. Uh, so you spoke about that earlier. Uh, but we try and promote any events that we think would be good for the small talk community and it, or you might be interested in attending an event um, or stories or articles or anything going on. Resolutions is a newsletter that we have that goes out just to our customers and partners. Uh, personal use license I talked to, academic license I've talked about, all of this stuff. Uh, we have a QR code up there so if you have one of those apps on your phone and you just do that with it, uh, it'll take you right to the website. You don't even have to type anything, you just have to do that. Uh, this is really going to come out good on video. Uh, right here you have, uh, these are my primary, these are the people from the Small Talk STAR team. STAR stands for Strategic Task Action Resource. That means that we're one shop stopping for the owner of Syncom. If anything comes into Syncom and it's a, it says Small Talk, it comes through the STAR team. So you might start with us, you might not finish with us, but you might start with us to find out what you need. Uh, but that's what this team is. So if you ever need to get in touch with us, I know all of our contact information is somewhere on the website, and if you did that QR code thingy, you'll get right to the website and you'll find our names, uh, so you can reach out to us. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? Anything? Anything? Anyone? Bueller? No. Hernan, nothing from you even? Come on. <laughs> Hernan has been the Neil Ross of this session, of this conference. Ask a question and everyone, he doesn't even ask me. So, okay. Uh, yes? What about, what about uh, supporting um, research projects that want to open source libraries and for that they all, I mean, when you, uh, let's say, in recent, your research project, you develop a cool tool or framework, you um, publish that as a set of files or whatever, users will need a license. Is there a way you can you support that type of, of research? I, I'm going to say yes. Uh, because I, I would have to say yes, because that's something that we could write up. A, we could write it up. We could we could promote it on our public repository, um, and we did start a program that I didn't mention here for some reason. Uh, but if you have something on the public repository and you want to sell it, we can build a store for you on our on our website and promote it. And I get it; it's a research project, and you yeah. might not be there. So one thing one thing is that's the easy one. Uh -huh. I publish the the file outs or parcels or whatever, uh -huh. and then the one that wants to use it has to get a single personal use license mm -hmm. and know how to get all that together. Yeah. What about if I build an application that they can just use, let's say, any tool to support? We're working now on on, on citizen science tools, mm -hmm. and it's not for profit, but these are like final applications. 
could you support something like that? Is that we would like to publish applications, not just highlights. Okay. Support is a really funky word uh, because support, we're not going to support it. Would we, would we assist you? Would we promote you? Would we help work with you on that? Is that we have to pay licenses for that to publish those applications. If you're not, if you're not deriving revenue, if personal use license, as soon as you make money on the app, yeah, then, then, then no. Yeah, so for a personal use license, if you're not making money on it, then no. It's not going to be personal in this. It's going to be on the, on the name of the research group or the university. It's not really personal in the terms of something that I did. But, but it's, nobody's going to make money with it. Let's talk about this. Because, I mean, my answer right now is yes, because I think, I, again, anytime we can promote anything that has to do with usage for small talk or value for small talk, uh, it's something that I'm interested in because, it, you know, with all of the customers that we have, I, I, oh, I forgot, I was supposed to show you. This is the pardon our name dropping brochure. So I have some of these. But my day job, I talk to these people. If they need something that we're not going to do in our product, and I find out that you're doing some research or something, then I can say to the customer, there's a group working on something like this. Let me get you in touch. So let's talk about that. OK, because I don't really, again, the word support. Uh, my, my support team and engineering team would be say no, say no, say no, we don't. Uh, but but different groups could potentially yeah you know, yeah so let's let's talk about that it sounds because again if it's promoting small talk I'm all over it okay. all right it's a wrap let's go, let's go.